The Samsung HWQ600C is a 3.1.2 channel soundbar with 360 watts of total power output. It also supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX. Now at the time of filming and in the UK, it can be found between 270 to 550 pounds, while in the US it can be found between 400 to 600 dollars. And yes indeed, there's quite a variation. Nonetheless, I'm going to see if it's actually worth its price tag and to see how it compares with some of its key competitors. Now before proceeding, I would also like to thank Philips Monitors for sponsoring this video. More on them a little bit later. Now to kick things off, I would just like to quickly talk about its build quality. And here the dimensions of the soundbar and the wireless subwoofer will be on your screen, so you can weigh it up for yourself. In my case, I've got it in front of a 55 inch TV on a cabinet. And I've got no issues whatsoever, given the slim profile of the main soundbar unit, it means that it doesn't actually obscure any of my lower portion of my TV viewing experience. Furthermore, you can also wall mount it if you so wish. Now as for the overall design of it, I've got no complaints. It's got a metal grill that stretches pretty much all the way around the soundbar. Although if you do have a keen eye, you will be able to notice that the sides are covered off. And I'll touch upon why this is important in the sound quality section of this review. Elsewhere, there is a forward facing LCD display, which is very handy to know what settings you're adjusting from afar. And you've got a few physical buttons placed at the top of it. You have also got a wireless remote, which is always appreciated and very much fundamentally needed in order for you to adjust the settings of the soundbar. Now the emphasis on that remote control is quite important because it does not support any sort of Wi-Fi, therefore meaning that you do not have access to the likes of Apple AirPlay, Google Chromecast, Spotify Connect or indeed access to the Samsung SmartThings app like you'd find on its more expensive sibling, the Q700C. Now this is actually quite important because if you do want to wirelessly stream to the soundbar you might want to look at one that actually does support Wi-Fi. Of course, you do have Bluetooth with the likes of the SPC and the AAC codec supported, although you probably want to use these sparingly because you'll get degraded audio performance, at least over a wireless transmission. Now it goes without saying that you can actually plug it in. And here it's great to see that you have got a singular HDMI input, which isn't the same that could be said about some of its competitors. So it's great to see that Samsung has actually thought about this. This will also feed through the likes of heightened metadata, such as Dolby Atmos or DTSX. Now for you to connect up to your television, you have got optical for more legacy devices and you've also got an HDMI port which has the eARC and the ARC standard. On the subject of connectivity, this perfectly brings me onto today's sponsor. The Philips Evnia 42 M2N 8900 sports a whopping 41.54 inch 138Hz 4K OLED panel with two HDMI 2.1 ports, DisplayPort 1.4, USB Type-C and even a built-in KVM switch. It's ideal for both gamers and those who are looking for a large sized monitor for productivity. Indeed, it's incredibly responsive, color accurate and is HDR10 compliant. Find out more by watching my detailed video up on your pop-up banner or following the links down in the description below. Now with all that out of the way, let's get on to an audio demo. I'll be playing back a track which is from Priya J titled Like Me and flicking through the different sound modes. So make sure you pay attention to the annotations on your screen so you can understand how the soundbar is actually operating. Furthermore, I'll also be playing back a piece to camera where I'll be presenting the Honda ZRV on Totally EV and I'll be enabling and disabling the voice enhancement feature. Because at the time of filming and in the UK, the ZRV starts from roughly £39,500 and extends to just shy of £43,000 without adding any insurance. So in this review, you're going to see how it compares to its siblings and of course some of its key competitors.
So to kick things off, let's talk about efficiency, and indeed very much like its Honda counterparts, this ZRV operates on the EHEV platform, and therefore means that it has got an also has two electric motors that power the front wheels. Yes, indeed, you'll have the engine sometimes working on its own, or a combination of the 1.05 kilowatt hour battery pack combining with the electric motors to power the front wheels. So I appreciate an audio demo over YouTube is never ideal, but I thought to provide it as a little bit of a taster. Now, in terms of the audio configuration, the main soundbar unit itself has got eight audio drivers. And here you have got six 30 watt drivers and two 10 watt drivers, and therefore tallying up to 200 watts of total power output. Then you have got the remainder 160 watts of power that is provided by the 6.5 inch wireless subwoofer. And the combination over here means that you have got 360 watts of power and a 3.1.2 channel configuration. Now in order for you to get to the rest of the features, you will have to have a modern Samsung television, which unfortunately I do not have. And this is of course in relation to the Samsung Q Symphony feature, which effectively allows you to utilize the built-in TV speakers and pair that up simultaneously with the soundbar speakers in order for you to supposedly get a bit more of that cinematic experience. Now with all that out of the way, how does the soundbar actually perform? Well, across a sound frequency range, it's actually pretty decent. Now let me break it down for you. First off, in terms of the sub bass extension, in other words, that low end rumble that you like, for example, if you're listening to certain movies or indeed certain bass orientated tracks, it is there. And that's thanks to the fact that you have got that 6.5 inch wireless subwoofer. Granted, it's not exactly gonna compete with those soundbar systems out there that have got a bigger subwoofer or indeed those hi-fi setups out there, but given the overall price point of the soundbar, at least the price point that I'm thinking about of 270 pounds in the UK or $500 in the US or $400 in the US, then in this respect, I do think it's actually a great sort of inclusion and will suffice for most consumers. Equally, the overall mid-bass presence is there, not only in terms of the quantity, but also the quality, which is fantastic to see. Often you'll find soundbar systems that actually struggle with the mid-bass presence because they are a little bit over bloated, but that's not the case with the Q600C. Of course, you can EQ it to your heart's content, be it in terms of the woofer, in other words, the subwoofer itself, or indeed the overall mid-bass impact that the main soundbar unit provides. Regrettably, however, this affects the overall mid-range clarity. In other words, the male and female vocals will sound pushed back, be it if you're listening to music or indeed just listening to the news or indeed podcasts. And as a result means that if you are wanting something that has that forward sounding mid-range, you might want to look elsewhere in terms of one of its competitors. You have got the ability to enable or disable the voice enhancement feature, which hopefully you were able to pick out there when I was presenting the Honda ZRV on Totally EV, but this does affect the overall other sound frequency range. In other words, it does cut out the lows, in other words, the bass, and also the highs, and therefore just means that the vocals come out to the foreground. Great, for example, if you're just listening to the news, but if you just want to feel a bit more involved, then I'll highly suggest having that EQ function disabled. Now, it would have been fantastic if the manufacturer did provide you dedicated mid-range and high-range EQs, but unfortunately, that's not the case. These sound frequency ranges are lobbed into the treble EQ, and as a result, anything you adjust will not only affect the overall mid-range, but also the highs. On that note, the high-end extension with a few notches added to the treble EQ do come out pretty well. Those dedicated tweeters do a pretty valiant job of giving you that sort of toe-tapping feeling without sounding too fatiguing. Of course, if you do not go crazy on that treble EQ. Now, as for the overall sound stage, here I do feel it's a little bit affected, and that's due to the fact that you do not have any sideward firing drivers. Yes, you do have that acoustic beam technology at the top of the soundbar, which tries to give you a little bit more of the extra dynamism and the extra width and depth, and it certainly does do its job, specifically if you use one of the surround or the adaptive EQ presets, but in comparison to soundbars that do have sideward firing drivers, it really can't compete. Now for me to demonstrate what I'm actually trying to explain, I'm gonna be using a movie demo. I'll be playing Transformers Age of Extinctions. Yet again, make sure you check out the annotations on your screen so you can understand how the soundbar is actually operating.
So yet again, an audio demo over YouTube isn't going to give you a lifelike reproduction, but hopefully you were able to pick out there that the heightened metadata of Dolby Atmos, or indeed, let's say if you have DTSX, is certainly appreciated with the Q600C. It gives you a bit more of that extra dynamism and gives you those extra sort of clarity. In other words, that instrument separation and the extra bit of height information. Now with that said, the emission yet again of the sideward firing drivers and the lack of real upward firing drivers does hamper the overall soundstage reproduction. So be it if you're utilizing the heightened metadata of Dolby Atmos or DTSX, or indeed just watching regular terrestrial TV or indeed YouTube videos, you will feel that the overall soundstage just feels a little bit unidirectional in comparison to soundbars that do actually have sideward and upward firing drivers, let alone the forward facing drivers like you'd find on the Q600C. Now ultimately what I'm trying to say over here is that the overall sound reproduction across the sound frequency range is actually pretty decent. And as for its overall sound stage, it is going to be a little bit disappointing for those people who are accustomed to those wide array of different audio drivers on more expensive soundbars. But if I do consider the overall price tag that you can currently find this Q600C, in other words, £270 in the UK and roughly $400 in the US, then there are not that many better alternatives. And as a result of this, it gets my Best Buy award. However, my opinions would have been quite different if I was reviewing this soundbar at the £550 price tag or indeed the $600 price tag. And in this respect, you will certainly want to look at some of the alternatives from the likes of JBL, Samsung, Harman Kardon, which are all within the Samsung group, or indeed elsewhere from the likes of Bose, Sonos, Majority, or indeed Sennheiser. Some of which I've reviewed and will be down in the description below for your own consideration. Now I'd be curious to know what you make of the Q600C down in the comment section below and what price you were able to get it at, at least if you have actually indeed purchased the soundbar yourself. If you have enjoyed this detailed independent review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which are certainly appreciated and allow me to continue delivering independent honest reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I hope you see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.